Aaron in the highest. Blessed is he, O oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Our first hymn this morning is 265. Ride on, ride on in majesty. Are all the tribes Hosanna cry? Your humble beast pursues its road with palms and scattered garments strode. 265. in our hearts for the loving care and blessings we have known. Your love has surrounded us every moment and in all our situations. In the light of that love, we see the weakness of our own. We have done so little in your name, so often our words and actions are a denial of your love. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to see in our Lord Jesus the way we should live the truths we should believe, and the life we can have in all its fullness when we trust in him. We pray for this fellowship and for our church and for all the other churches in East Cows and on the island, that working together and caring together, we may grow in the knowledge of your love and be given the wisdom and strength to be your witness here and in our homes and neighbourhood reaching out to meet the needs of those around us. Be with us, Lord, in this service this morning. May the praises we sing become the joy that shows in our work and witness. May the Bible reading we hear increase our knowledge of you. Let the power of your love help us to find and do the things that really count in the work of your kingdom as we dedicate ourselves afresh to him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our 
second hymn is 262. All glory, Lord, and honor to thee, redeemer king, to whom the lips of children made sweet for his spring. 262. Jesus for money and that's the first time I'd ever heard that um, but so uh, to say I'm sure Frost does no oh well that may be a northern Catholic thing then but that's what she told me so Wednesday is spy Wednesday because Judas was a spy later on and you're giving a gospel reading but it's about Jesus entering uh, Jerusalem and going through his you know, good day and this is reflection, and it's Simon the Zealot. What a day it was, a day I shall never forget. The voices raised in jubilation, the arms outstretched in welcome, the crowds lining the streets, waving their palm branches, hurling down their cloaks, welcoming their king, the son of David, the one who came in the name of the Lord. They believed that at long last the waiting was over, the Messiah, finally had come to set them free. We believed it too come to that. After his talk of suffering and death, we dared to hope he'd got it wrong, 
And for the moment, as I watched him, I wondered if he felt the same. The way he responded to the cheers, laughter playing on his lips, a smile on his face, a twinkle in his eye. He was enjoying himself, I'm sure of that, determined to save the moment. But then I noticed it as we drew nearer to Jerusalem, a tear in the corner of his eye. So unexpected, not a tear of joy, but of sorrow trickling down, slowly down his face, silent testimony to his pain. He wasn't fought and biased at all, not like the rest of us. He knew what they wanted, how they would change. He knew they would offer the cross if he rejected their crown, but still he continued, resolute to the end. That's the extraordinary thing. It was a day to remember, a day on which they welcomed their king, but none imagined, least or have I, that the crown would be made of thorns, and the thorn reached by a cross. So that is some disreflection on a day that started Holy Week. We will now sing hymn 264, Make Way, Make Way for Christ the King.
Christ our King, give us your strength. We bring to your love every meeting, demonstration, convention, and all large crowds. May they be peaceful and ordered, inspiring those present for good rather than inciting them to violence. Christ our King, give us your strength. We bring to your love those who are going through difficult times at the moment. This morning we especially think of Kate, William, George, Charlotte and Louis. We pray that they will be blessed with the love and help of family and friends, and above all, the peace of mind that only you can give. Christ our King, we bring to your love our own loved ones and members of our families, our friends, and especially those from whom we are separated, either by distance or death, and all who are missing from their homes. May your powerful love protect us from all that is evil. Christ our King, we bring to your love those suffering from incurable or life-threatening diseases, those who need medical care but either too poor or live too far away to receive it. Make us more ready to help with our time, money and influence so that unnecessary suffering and death are avoided. Bring to your love those who have died. May they rest in the light and joy of your presence forever. Christ our King. Lord, may we praise you not only with our voices, but also in the lives we lead, that the words of our prayers may be always more than matched by the value of our deeds. Christ our King. Give us Amen. Amen. Our next hymn is 277. My song is love unknown, my Saviour's love to me, love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be. Oh, who am I but for my sake, my Lord should take frail flesh and die. 277.
to 11. So that's Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. As I approached Jerusalem and came to Bethany to Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of, ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Tell him, The Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went. And found a colt outside in the street, tied at the doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered, As Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, whilst others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosannas! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything. Since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Thanks be to God for his reason. Thank you, Andy. It's nice to have you back doing the reading for us. It is unusual for all the Gospels to cover the same part of Jesus' life. But the entry into Jerusalem, all the Gospels are so careful to include both Jesus' detailed instruction on, what to, on where to find a cult and what to do with it. Once they located it and in nearly word for word, Repeat that for once the disciples do as they are told. Is this order meant to be a small miracle as Jesus reveals his ability to see into the future? If so, it does not rate up there with all his other miracles of raising the dead and walking on water. Or is it that some hint that Jesus had actually prearranged this in an earthly manner, replete with some encoded secret password? So the owner will know that it is okay to let some strangers take off with their animals, as a donkey was a much valued possession. A donkey is an animal of peace, unlike the horse, which is the animal of war. A king would have ridden a horse when he went into battle, and a donkey to symbolise his arrival in peace. Christ's entry into Jerusalem would have symbolised his entry as the Prince of Peace. The palm branch was a symbol of triumph and victory. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on a borrowed donkey, surrounded by people cheering and shouting Hosanna. They are throwing palms and their cloaks for him to ride on. The air is filled with excitement. A week later, all that will change, and they will be calling for his death. It reminds me of how the media praise people one week and then knocking them down the next, especially in football games and football managers. After Jesus entered Jerusalem, he enters the temple. He looks around and leaves. He says nothing and leaves Jerusalem and goes to Bethany. Mark is the only gospel that says Jesus left the temple as it was already late. Was Jesus late in returning the donkey? And again, Mark is the only gospel to say Jesus promised to return the donkey. Or was Jesus a little scared by Holy Week? Was he thinking about all that was going to happen to him and wanted someone, some time alone to pray? And as we say these days, he just wanted to get his head around it and have some knee time. I mean, I know if I go to the dentist, I have a herd of elephants in my tummy but how the Lord must have felt knowing what was coming to him. Jesus returned into the court city the next day without fanfare, but this time he curses a fig tree, which is a reminder of just how much the Lord hates hypocrites. The fig tree represented Israel. He then cleans out the temple court due to them being used by moneylenders. Returning the cult is how Holy Week begins 
Returning to God is the promise of how this week will end. And I think, you know, we all must be extra vigilant over Holy Week so that the evil one doesn't enter us with any false thoughts. We now sing hymn 247, one of my favourites. I danced in the morning when the world had begun, and I danced in the moon when the stars and the sun. Hymn 247.